Operation RSVP by H. Beam Piper Narrated by William Skye Bombs, guided missiles, bacteria, none is as deadly as a glib-tongued diplomat. Vladimir N. Zhubinsky, Foreign Minister, Union of East European Soviet Republics, to Wu Feng Tung, Foreign Minister, United People's Republics of East Asia. 15th of January 1984. Honoured Sir, Pursuant to our well-known policy of exchanging military and scientific information with the government of friendly powers, my government takes great pleasure in announcing the completely successful final tests of our new nuclear rocket-guided missile, Marxist Victory. The test launching was made from a position south of Lake Balkash. The target was located in the East Siberian Sea. In order to assist you in appreciating the range of the new guided missile Marxist Victory, let me point out that the distance from launching site to target is somewhat over 50% greater than the distance from launching site to your capital, Nanking. My government is still hopeful that your government will revise its present intransigent position on the Kakum River dispute. I have the honour, etc., 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 V. N. Zhubinsky. Wu Feng Tung to Vladimir N. Zhubinsky, 7th of February 1984. Estimable sir, my government was most delighted to learn of the splendid triumph of your government in developing the new guided missile Marxist victory, and at the same time deeply relieved. We had, of course, detected the release of nuclear energy incident to the test, and inasmuch as it had obviously originated in the disintegration of a quantity of uranium-235, we had feared that an explosion had occurred at your government's secret uranium plant at Katanga. We have long known of the lax security measures in effect at this plant, and have as a consequence been expecting some disaster there. I am therefore sure that your government will be equally gratified to learn of the perfection, by my government, of our own new guided missile, Celestial Destroyer, which embodies in greatly improved form many of the features of your own government's guided missile Marxist victory. Naturally, your own scientific warfare specialists have detected the release of energy incident to the explosion of our own improved thorium-hafnium interaction bomb. This bomb was exploded over the North Polar Ice Cap, about 200 miles south of the Pole, on about 35 degrees east longitude, almost due north of your capital city of Moscow. The launching was made from a site in Tibet. Naturally, my government cannot deviate from our present just and reasonable attitude in the Kharkoum River question. Trusting that your government will realise this, I have the honour to be your obedient and respectful servant, Wu Feng Tung. From New York Times, February 20th, 1984. Afghan ruler fated at Nanking. Amir Shia Ali Abdallah confers with UPREA President Sung Lee Yin. UEESR Foreign Minister Zhubinsky to Maxim G. Kurilenkov, Ambassador at Nanking. 3rd of March, 1984. Comrade Ambassador. It is desired that you make immediate secret and confidential, repeat, secret and confidential inquiry as to the whereabouts of Dr. Dmitry O. Voronov, the noted Soviet rocket expert, designer of the new guided missile Marxist victory, who vanished a week ago from the Yosef Vissarionovich Jugashvili Reaction Propulsion Laboratories at Molotovgorod. It is feared in government circles that this noted scientist has been abducted by agents of the United People's Republics of East Asia, possibly to extract from him, under torture, information of a secret technical nature. As you know, this is but the latest of a series of such disappearances, beginning about five years ago, when the Kharkoum River question first arose. Your utmost activity in this matter is required. Zhubinsky Ambassador Kirilenkov to Foreign Minister Zhubinsky 9th of March 1984 Comrade Foreign Minister since receipt of yours of 3rd of the 3rd, 84, I have been utilising all resources at my disposal in the matter of the noted scientist D. O. Voronov, and availing myself of all sources of information, e.g. spies, secret agents, disaffected elements of the local population, and including two UPREA cabinet ministers on my payroll. 
I regret to report the results of this investigation have been entirely negative. No one here appears to know anything of the whereabouts of Dr. Voronoff. At the same time, there is considerable concern in UPREA government circles over the disappearances of certain prominent East Asian scientists, e.g. Dr. Hong Fu, the nuclear physicist, Dr. Hin Yang Wu, the great theoretical mathematician, Dr. Mong Xing, the electronics expert. I am informed that UPREA government sources are attributing these disappearances to us. I can only say that I am sincerely sorry that this is not the case. Kirilenkov Wu Feng Tung to Vladimir N. Zhubinsky 21st of April 1984 Estimable Sir, In accordance with our established policy of free exchange with friendly powers of scientific information, permit me to inform your government that a new mutated disease virus has been developed in our biological laboratories, causing a highly contagious disease similar in symptoms to bubonic plague, but responding to none of the treatments for this latter disease. This new virus strain was accidentally produced in the course of some experiments with radioactivity. In spite of the greatest care, it is feared that this virus has spread beyond the laboratory in which it was developed. We warn you most urgently of the danger that it may have spread to the UEESR, enclosed are a list of symptoms, etc. My government instructs me to advise your government that the attitude of your government in the Khakum River question is utterly unacceptable and will require considerable revision before my government can even consider negotiation with your government on the subject. Your obedient and respectful servant, Wu Feng Tung. From New York Times, May 12, 1984. Afghan ruler fated at Moscow. Amir sees Red Square Troop Review. Confers with Premier President Muzorgin. Sing Yat, UPREA Ambassador at Moscow to Wu Feng Tung, 26th of June 1984. Venerable and honoured sir, I regret humbly that I can learn nothing whatever about the fate of the learned scholars of science of whom you inquire, namely Hong Fu, Hin Yang Wu, Mong Xing, Li Ho Li, Wong Fat, and Bao Hu Xin. This inability may be in part due to incompetence of my unworthy self, but none of my many sources of information, including Soviet Minister of Police Morgadov, who is on my payroll, can furnish any useful data whatever. I am informed, however, that the UEESR government is deeply concerned about similar disappearances of some of the foremost of their own scientists, including Voronov, Yernikov, Kagorinov, Bakorin, Himmelfarber, and Pavlovinsky, all of whose dossiers are on file with our Bureau of Foreign Intelligence. I am further informed that the government of the UEESR ascribes these disappearances to our own activities. Ah, venerable and honoured sir, if this were only true! Kindly condescend to accept compliments of Sing Yat. Jubinsky to Wu Feng Tung, 6th of October 1984. Honoured sir, Pursuant to our well-known policy of exchanging scientific information with the governments of friendly powers, my government takes the greatest pleasure in announcing a scientific discovery of inestimable value to the entire world. I refer to nothing less than a positive technique for liquidating rats as a species. This technique involves treatment of male rats with certain types of hard radiations, which not only renders them reproductively sterile, but leaves the rodents so treated in full possession of all other sexual functions and impulses. Furthermore, this condition of sterility is venereally contagious, so that one male rat so treated will sterilize all female rats with which it comes in contact, and these, in turn, will sterilize all male rats coming in contact with them. Our mathematicians estimate that even under moderately favorable circumstances, the entire rat population of the world could be sterilized from one male rat in approximately 200 years. Rats so treated have already been liberated in the granaries at Odessa. In three months, rat trappings there have fallen by 26.4%, and grain losses to rats by 32.09%. We are shipping you six dozen sterilized male rats which you can use for sterilization stock, and, by so augmenting their numbers, may duplicate our own successes. Curiously enough, 
This effect of venereally contagious sterility was discovered quite accidentally, in connection with the use of hard radiations for human sterilization, criminals, mental defectives, etc. Knowing the disastrous possible effects of an epidemic of contagious human sterility, all persons so sterilized were liquidated as soon as the contagious nature of their sterility had been discovered, with the exception of a dozen or so convicts who had been released before this discovery was made. It is believed that at least some of them have made their way over the border and into the territory of the United People's Republics of East Asia. I must caution your government to be on the lookout of them. Among a people still practicing ancestor worship, an epidemic of sterility would be a disaster indeed. My government must insist that your government take some definite step toward the solution of the Khakum River question. The present position of the government of the United People's Republics of East Asia on this subject is utterly unacceptable to the government of the Union of East European Soviet Republics, and must be revised very considerably. I have the honour, etc., etc. Vladimir N. Zhubinsky Coded Radiogram Zhubinsky to Kurilenkov, 25th of October 1984 Ascertain immediately cause of release of nuclear energy vicinity of Nova Zembla this AM. Zhubinsky. Coded radiogram Wu Feng Tung to Sing Yat. 25th of October 1984. Ascertain immediately cause of release of nuclear energy vicinity of Nova Zembla this AM. Wu. Letter from the Emir of Afghanistan to UEESR Premier President Muzorgin and UPREA President Sung Lee Yin. 26th of October, 1984. Shia Ali Abdallah, Amir of Afghanistan, Master of Kabul, Lord of Herat and Kandahar, Keeper of Khyber Pass, Defender of the True Faith, Servant of the Most High and Sword Hand of the Prophet, PhD Princeton, SCB Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MA Oxford. To Their Excellencies A. A. Muzorgin, Premier President of the Union of East European Soviet Republics, and Sung Li Yin, President of the United People's Republics of East Asia. Greetings in the name of Allah. For the past five years I have watched, with growing concern, the increasing tensions between Your Excellencies' respective governments, allegedly arising out of the so-called Khakum River question. It is my conviction that this Khakum River dispute is the utterly fraudulent device by which both governments hope to create a pretext for the invasion of India, each ostensibly to rescue that unhappy country from the rapacity of the other. Your Excellencies must surely realise that this is a contingency which the government of the Kingdom of Afghanistan cannot and will not permit. It would mean nothing short of the national extinction of the Kingdom of Afghanistan and the enslavement of the Afghan people. Your Excellencies will recall that I discussed this matter most urgently on the occasions of my visits to your respective capitals of Moscow and Nanking, and your respective attitudes on those occasions has firmly convinced me that neither of Your Excellencies is by nature capable of adopting a rational or civilised attitude toward this question. It appears that neither of Your Excellencies has any intention of abandoning your present war of mutual threats and blackmail, until forced to do so by some overt act on the part of one or the other of Your Excellency's governments, which would result in physical war of pan-Asiatic scope and magnitude. I am further convinced that this deplorable situation arises out of the megalomaniac ambitions of the federal governments of the UEESR and the UPREA, respectively, and that the different peoples of what you unblushingly call your autonomous republics have no ambitions except on a rapidly diminishing order of probability, to live out their natural span of years in peace. Therefore, in the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, we, Shia Ali Abdallah, Amir of Afghanistan, etc., do decree and command that the political entities known as the Union of East European Soviet Republics and the United People's Republics of East Asia, respectively, are herewith abolished and dissolved into their constituent autonomous republics, each one of which shall hereafter enjoy complete sovereignty within its own borders, as is right and proper. Now, in case either of you gentlemen feel inclined to laugh this off, let me remind you of the series of mysterious disappearances of some of the most noted scientists 
of both the UEESR and the UPREA. And let me advise your excellencies that these scientists are now residents and subjects of the Kingdom of Afghanistan, and are here engaged in research and development work for my government. These gentlemen were not abducted, as you gentlemen seem to believe. They came here of their own free will, and ask nothing better than to remain here, where they are treated with dignity and honour, given material rewards, riches, palaces, harems, retinues of servants, etc., and are also free from the intellectual and ideological restraints which make life so intolerable in your respective countries to any man above the order of intelligence of a cretin. In return for these benefactions, these eminent scientists have developed for my government certain weapons. For example, 1. A nuclear rocket guided missile, officially designated as the Sword of Islam, vastly superior to Your Excellency's respective guided missiles Marxist Victory and Celestial Destroyer. It should be. It was the product of the joint efforts of Dr. Voronoff and Dr. Bao Hu Shin, whom Your Excellencies know. 2. A new type of radar radio electronic defence screen, which can not only detect the approach of a guided missile at any velocity whatever, but will automatically capture and redirect same. In case either of your excellencies doubt this statement, you are invited to aim a rocket at some target in Afghanistan and see what happens. 3. Both the UPREA mutated virus and the UEESR contagious sterility, with positive vaccines against the former and means of instrumental detection of the latter. 4. A technique for initiating and controlling the beta-carbon hydrogen cycle. We are now using this as a source of heat for industrial and even domestic purposes, and we also have a carbon hydrogen cycle bomb. Such a bomb, delivered by one of our Sword of Islam Mark IVs, was activated yesterday over the northern tip of Nova Zembla, at an altitude of four miles. I am enclosing photographic reproductions of views of this test, televised to Kabul by an accompanying Sword of Islam Mark V observation rocket. I am informed that expeditions have been sent by both the UEESR and the UPREA to investigate. They should find some very interesting conditions. For one thing, they won't need their climbing equipment to get over the Nova Zembla Glacier. The Nova Zembla Glacier isn't there anymore. 5. A lithium bomb. This has not been tested yet. A lithium bomb is nothing for a country the size of Afghanistan to let off inside its own borders. We intend making a test with it within the next 10 days. However, if your excellencies will designate a target, which must be at the centre of an uninhabited area at least 500 miles square, the test can be made in perfect safety. If not, I cannot answer the results. That will be in the hands of Allah, who has ordained all things. No doubt Allah has ordained the destruction of either Moscow or Nanking. Whichever city Allah has elected to erase, I will make it my personal responsibility to see to it that the other isn't slighted either. However, if your excellencies decide to accede to my modest and reasonable demands, not later than one week from today, this test launching will be cancelled as unnecessary. Of course, that would leave unsettled a bet I have made with Dr. Hong Fu, a star sapphire against his favourite Persian concubine, that the explosion of a lithium bomb will not initiate a chain reaction in the Earth's crust and so disintegrate this planet. This, of course, is a minor consideration, unworthy of your notice. Of course, I am aware that both your excellencies have, in the past, fomented mutual jealousies and suspicions among the several autonomous republics under your respective jurisdictions as an instrument of policy. If these people were, at this time, to receive full independence, the present inevitability of a pan-Asiatic war on a grand scale would be replaced only by the inevitability of a pan-Asiatic war by detail. Obviously, some single supranational sovereignty is needed to maintain peace, and such a sovereignty should be established under some leadership not hitherto associated with either the former UEESR or the former UPREA. I humbly offer myself as president of such a supranational organisation, counting as a matter of course upon the wholehearted support and cooperation of both your excellencies. It might be well if both your excellencies were to come here to Kabul to confer with me on this subject at your very earliest convenience. The peace of Allah be upon both your excellencies. Shia Ali Abdallah
PhD, SCB, MA. From New York Times, October 30th, 1984. Muzorgin, Sun Li Yin, fated at Kabul. Confer with Amir. Discuss peace plans. Surprise development scene. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the story, hit the like button and subscribe for more read-alongs like this every Monday and Friday. And if you want another story like this by H. Beam Piper, I recommend The Answer. A link to that video is on screen now.